All right, everybody, this is my 2003 Ram 2500 with a Cummins turbo diesel. Um, I was hauling uh, about 10,000 pounds a couple weeks ago, and the transmission got hot. And uh, it's a auto, according to the VIN, it's a 46RE. Um, and so I'm going to try to figure out what the heck went wrong here. Um, one of the things I'm going to do to try to upgrade the system is drop the tranny pan, uh, replace the fluid and filter. Um, this is the good fluid. I got it at the Mopar dealer. I think there's other outlets to get it, but um, it's the good synthetic stuff. It's expensive, 35 to $45 for a uh, five liter jug. Um, as sort of a belt and suspenders, got this uh, mag, I don't know how to say it, uh, extra cooling uh, pan. It holds an extra four quarts. Um, and it comes with this little extension block so your filter will be lower down and you can get all of your fluid. It does not come with a filter. They are sold separately. Um, this is the pan part and it comes with pretty much everything you need except for the filter. Um, but before getting into that, let's talk about what could have happened. Well, what I do know is there was no transmission fluid leaking from anywhere which means there's something uh, going on inside the system itself. Um, the first thing I checked was the transmission cooler and um, in these Dodges we've got a nice sandwich here. You've got your AC cooler first, then you've got your uh, turbo air cooler right there and then behind it here is actually where the transmission cooler is and they're pretty stout. Um, the one thing that's a little different on Dodges than some others is it's got this cool little uh, thermostat right here and it's not a kind of thermostat you can just replace like uh, in your regular cooling system. There's a little C-clip on the end of it and I understand you can pull it apart and if it's uh, sticky and it's not uh, working correctly what will happen is it'll be shooting the fluid all the way around the core and not running the fluid through the core um, which can present an overheating problem. Um, I don't know if the parts inside of the thermostat here are actually serviceable um, I don't think they're available, but I think you can take them out and clean them. Um, and I believe there's some people on YouTube that may have talked about that. Um, I just went ahead and put in a whole new cooler because this is the original 03. We're in 2017, and I'm not really sure what's in it. Um, anyway, to do that, um, what, what had to happen was pull off the air conditioning condenser here. There's four bolts. Pull it to the side. Um, and then the cooler here for the turbo these two bolts come out and the harder part is taking out these little uh, clamps right here that hold it in place that lifts up slightly comes out and then you've got access to this um, and you've got those cool little clips down there that are um, use the tool like what you use in an air conditioning system so I'm not going to talk any more about this cooler maybe the sticky thermostat was my problem I'm not sure uh, but we're going to go on to uh, another option uh, down below. Alright, I'm lying on the driveway here so we don't have a really good view like we would if we had a lift. Um, anyway, we're looking at the tranny and the lines coming to it. Um, this is the pan that's going to get replaced. Um, the best thing about the replacement, it's got an oil uh, drain plug in it, just like the oil pan does. The factory does not, so you take out about all the bolts except for a couple and then you uh, tilt the pan down and you get a shower with uh, transmission fluid. Um, the new one with the drain plug doesn't do that, so that'll be super cool. It's almost worth the price of admission right there. Um, also, the factory pan uh, has a gasket that's uh, reusable, and so if your gasket's not broken and it's the factory one, you probably want to use that instead of the cork because they're, they're really good. So anyway, um, we've got the two tranny lines here come out from the transmission and work their way up towards the front of the motor and then it's kind of hard to see over here but they go into this liquid cooler where the transmission fluid is warmed to about the engine temperature which is sort of uh, the opposite of what most people want um, but the liquid to liquid cools a lot better than air to liquid so when your transmission's getting hotter than the engine temperature it cools it down pretty nice. Um, this uh, liquid cooler can uh, get clogged so you want to check and make sure there's 
no uh, clog in that. And the best way to do this is just to blow air through it um, once <laughs> you're not full of fluid. Um, the other uh, issue that could have led to uh, the heating problem is these lines have these little uh, check balls in them. Uh, Anti-drain back, I'm not sure what the proper term for it is, but it's a little ball so when you turn off the motor, uh, the ball keeps the fluid from uh, draining and it stays in your torque converter and transmission. Um, if you let all the fluid drain without those, uh, you have to put your car in neutral for a few seconds to let the fluid fill up again uh, before you can go. Um, but the balls tend to collect uh, debris in the system and potentially if they do clog the line, um, then you're going to have a toasted transmission pretty quick. Um, so a lot of folks remove those from the transmission lines. Um, and I've tried really hard to find a nice diagram of that and I haven't. So I'm going to pull some lines here and try to find it and show you guys uh, what that's all about. The first thing I'm going to do is a flow test. Um, the idea came from Transman on Moparts.com and uh, what you do is you remove the rear transmission line and put it into a clear jug with uh, one quart marked off. Uh, you fire up the vehicle and um, when the fluid starts pumping out of the line, give it 10 seconds. And during those 10 seconds, it should pump at least a quart. And if it does pump at least a quart, you know um, that the drain down valves, the coolers in the lines, and the valve body converter circuit and pump are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, if it doesn't, uh, you got a problem when we go from there. So that's going to be the, the first thing we do today.